Hi, welcome along to another video. Links to the articles and the information shown are in the information section of this video. We'll start this week with the money. In PK News 10, there's an article about a new study that presents the estimated direct costs of a stratospheric aerosol injection program through to the end of this century. The SAI would cost about $18 billion a year per 1 degree Celsius of warming avoided. So that'll be $36 billion for 2 degrees, $54 billion for 3 degrees. So they source the information from Reddit. There's a link on that article to the actual paper, which is an open access paper. So you can download the PDF and read the report. In the abstract, this paper presents the estimated direct costs of a stratospheric aerosol injection program through to the end of this century and so on. From the 3rd of January 2020, Reuters article in the Irrawaddy, Jakarta, Indonesia will carry out cloud seeding on Friday in a bid to prevent further rainfall over the capital after deadly flash floods and landslides following some of the heaviest rains ever recorded. Then moving on to June 2020, six months later, to do with forest fires, the Ministry will use weather modification technology to make artificial rains. The Minister pointed out that related institutions have conducted weather modifications in several areas. The Minister hopes the weather modification would be effective as the artificial rains would pour waters onto peatlands and bushes which are prone to land and forest fires. So we should presume then now that they're going to be doing some weather modification cloud seeding to stop the rain that they started in June, going by what happened nearly 12 months ago. In the Eurasian Times, mainstream media, not often they touch on the subjects of HARP, were Haiti, Lebanon and now Turkey subjected to a man-made earthquake via HARP technology. And they make it clear that the views are personal. <laughs> so was the earthquake that hit Turkey and Greece on October the 30th an induced earthquake? Despite how the conspiracy theories have been abound, it was also found that the US had stopped its HARP agenda as per a report in the NBC News on May the 23rd, 2014, through which it is construed that man-made tsunamis, earthquakes, weather alterations and many natural disasters can be manufactured. Those of you that follow the subject of HARP will remember that when that came out and the facility changed hands. Now in this article, it said the US had stopped its HARP agenda. This is not true. The article they reference, secret weapon, conspiracy theories abound as US military closes HARP. That was in NBC News, May 22nd, 2014. Now on the US Air Force website, from December the 7th, 2016, a year and a half after these articles, Air Force agreement allows ionospheric research to continue and we find that it's been given to the University of Alaska Fairbanks who now have a HARP website after the US Air Force HARP website closed. On that website there's lots to play with. You can look at Aurora activity, the ionosonder, VLF receiver, all the stuff that used to be on the old HARP website. Over to Mirage, combating climate change, how to best use new technologies. A new grant from the European Research Council will fund an international research project on negative emission technologies. Another significant technology is solar radiation management, a type of climate engineering in which sunlight is reflected to limit or reverse global warming. The research team of the GENI project, Geoengineering and Negative Emissions Pathways in Europe, funded by the ERC Synergy Grant, aims to identify how where and when to use these technologies effectively. So the European Research Council supporting top researchers from anywhere in the world, as long as you work for an organisation or are involved in an organisation, so you can't be just an individual person on your own, you have to be in the system to get one of these grants. So the project Geoengineering and Negative Emissions Pathways in Europe, GENI, ERC funding, 9.1 million euros for six years. 9.1 million euros is around 10 million US dollars. 
and there's your researchers and hosts from Denmark, Germany and Austria. Historical information from the Brooklyn Daily Eagle, November the 5th, we all know what that day is. On this day, November the 5th, in 1951, the Eagle reported City fathers are spending money today to prove that the well-spent money for rainmaking activities last year was a poor investment after all. Almost 12 months ago, the men who hold the purse strings said Dr Wallace Howell's dry icing of fat clouds over the Catskills had filled the city's reservoirs and was worth all the money he was paid. Now, aides to the city controller, Lazarus Joseph, report that a survey has been started to show that the experiment was a failure. They explain the survey was needed to give the city a defence against 169 damage suits from the Catskills residents totalling $2,138,510. Shandakun, a Catskills community, has asked for $167,150 for alleging that Howe's cloud seeding started a violent precipitation of rain resulting in severe floods in Aesopus Creek and other streams. Ulster County wants $387,500 as a result of storm damages. The city says the heavy cloud burst that drenched the Catskills last November the 25th were caused by disturbances from the uh, Ohio Valley. And there you see it as always person gets paid to do the weather modification the weather modification goes wrong causes damage to people's property etc causes floods and then the people that employ the weather modifiers say actually it's not as a result of the weather modification because it doesn't work like they're paying for it you know but it doesn't work like that that weather modification didn't affect the weather it was actually the weather from somewhere somewhere else that affected the weather and caused the flood typical 1951 2020 it's the same story weather modification works people buy weather modification weather modification goes wrong everybody denies that denies it's the weather modification yeah in the hindu business line from india letters to the editor dated 4th of november You'll all be aware of the saying, people program people. You don't need the elite or artificial intelligence or mind control or hypnosis. People are more than happy to program other people. So there's a letter to the editor of the paper to deal with the smog challenge in Delhi. The smog, everyone knows, is not because of people igniting non-green crackers, but due to stubble burning. And then the person makes suggestions about what could help reduce the smog. Artificial rainfall via cloud seeding can also help. Which we all know can't help. It might help temporarily, but it's not going to help in the long run, is it? Over to the APN News. Interesting article written by Don Johnston. He's the former fourth Secretary General of the OECD. The OECD is the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development. The article he's written, he starts off with, uh, the title of these comments is inspired by my personal experience in important areas of public policy, both as a politician beginning in the 1970s and more recently as Secretary General of the OECD from 1996 until 2006. So he's a Canadian politician. Now if anyone knows... He's going to be one of the people to be in the position to know. And he gives a bit of a sort of warning here. I think in his article, this is worth paying attention to. Solar radiation management, a form of geoengineering, seems to be broadly under consideration. Is that good or of concern? As areas of the world may become uninhabitable, will there be mass migration from areas of the developing world to temperate climates? Obviously, it means the developing world. So, quite a warning there. Seems to be broadly under consideration. Broadly under consideration means very close to implementation in a public way. So, many of us would state that it's been going on for 20 odd years already, but the public Im- implementation where the public are told solar radiation management is happening, it's broadly under consideration. So, we're close. 
Um, the lesson from that, you have to proofread what you write and not spell check it. Because spell checker won't find word to be wrong. When you mean world and you put word, spell checker won't highlight that. But you would find it if you proofread it. So just a little bit of advice to the person who wrote the article. I know he's had some important jobs before, but everyone seems to be making that silly mistake when they should be proofreading work. And on that note, see you next time.